Hi. Hi. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt your conversation. I'm very much enjoying. Continuing. No, you know, it's like 530 and it's time to bring you on. And I only have these other th Have you been, have you heard what's going on? This person was dating. Yeah. Somebody, he was depressed. I think that person really likes her. But then if you go off on your own person and, and, and just try to figure it out, you get the wealth card. So I just feel like you're probably a hottie or something. And you're just going to be like, lots of you're going to get lots of dates. You get the power card, four of four of discs. You're just gonna be like, yes, I'm in my power. The lovers card, and then maybe from that place you can decide. Once this person freaks out and is like, wait, come back. You're my soulmate. You're my you're my. I'm your divine masculine counterpart. Like earlier, you can figure out from a place of like abundance whether you want to actually do that or not. That's what I think. Hi, Tegan. How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well as well. Well, um, congratulations on your book that's coming out. Thank you. Same to Thanks. you. Thanks. Um, you are collaborating. You and Sarah collaborated with Tilly Walden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. She's Tilly's amazing. Obviously, it was really exciting a few years ago when we um, put out our memoir, High School. Mm -hmm. The publisher asked us to adapt the story for a younger audience and do a graphic novel, and we just said yes. I didn't even think anything about it, and then. All of a sudden it was time to write it and they sent us a few ideas but tilly was the first name and we were like oh my god i mean if we could get tilly walden so yeah this is our second collaboration this book it's called crush it's out october 1st and i feel like so honored that we got to work with her and and uh yeah tell me about your book um that's so great and and yes i'm so excited when i saw that i was like wow it's not it's like tilly walden and you guys like what are like a, a power throuple it's very cool <laughs> we are um Trouble. You're a power thruple. You're like a graphic novel power thruple. Mine is, a, it's a witch book. It's like more of what I'm doing here, sort of, yeah. you know? It's like stories about how I sort of started taking magic seriously when I was younger and growing up in a weird Catholic family where all of the women seemed like they were witches, you know, secret self-loathing witches and stuff like that. And lots of spells, which I find very fun to write. That's amazing. I think yeah. that's very cool. I can't wait to get the book. Thank you. It's, it's like it's en route to you right now. Oh, it is? It's like, okay. yeah, it's well, in the mail somewhere. It could okay, show up any minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want me to pull cards for you? Yeah. You know what's funny, funny is I've never, ever had a tarot reading before. Oh, my God. Because did it happen when I tried to read your cards before? The, the Like, we just kept crashing the internet? Yeah. I feel like we um, we we ended up trying a couple times, and it was during COVID times and I kind of live out on an island with bad service and I do remember some failed attempts, but yeah, so I've never, I wasn't meant to be clearly cause you know, now it's happening now. Oh so god. yeah, I've kind of into cool. it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, okay, so I can either, if there's something that you want some insight on, especially if there's, you know, what does it look like if I take this route versus that route? Those are good questions. Or um, I can do a vibe check if you're like, what's the energy around this look like you know things like that oh, god um this is probably why i don't get tarot readings i'm like so whore i don't even know i have like no idea what to even okay. ask um, that's fine too because what we'll do is we'll just be like what does the tarot want you to yeah. be thinking about yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. that's actually that's, that's real on brand i'm very deferential and an appeaser so what does tarot want what sign are you i'm a virgo oh okay okay yeah all right all right what does what does the universe just want you to be thinking about? That's actually one of my favorite yeah. ways to use tarot. It's how I use it on myself. Okay, I love it. Yeah. I'm yeah. In. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <That's funny. Thomas. laughs> I know. This is really, this is really great. Whoa. Okay. Um, okay, you have a really, you have the best card in the tarot as your centerpiece cards. So I pick three cards and usually when I do that, um, sometimes the card that's in the middle really feels like the centerpiece. And this is one of those times. So the card in the very middle is the universe card. And when this oh. card comes up, I know it's very cool. It, it's really sort of like everything is exactly how it is supposed to be. Um, Everything that you've done has led you here. It's a lot about destiny. Um, 
and you have these beautiful cards near around it too like the card on the other side of it is the lust card which is right. really i mean it's so great and yeah it's a sexy card but it's also really about lust for life it's like i'm going to get everything i can out of this life like i'm just going to be i'm going to like live so passionately i'm going to like try my hand at all the things See, and and then you have this really cool minor arcana card on the other side which is the four of wands um it's venus and aries it's called completion but it's it's a funny card because it's early in you know the, the the tarot i don't even know if you i love that you've never gotten your tarot cards right before this is amazing so the, this, there's like the major arcanas which are the big magical cards like this okay and then there's the, the minor arcanas kind of mimic playing cards they're four suits and they run one through ten right so the 10 is the culmination. Four is really early on, but what this means by um, completion is that you've completed a really strong foundation. Like, a, okay. and it's like, it's got legs. It, there's like four, four legs on a table. And it's really funny to think about like your life and your career as being like, you've built a strong foundation. Because clearly you've, you've accomplished so much, but it's asking you to think about everything that you've accomplished as the foundation which hmm. is really incredible. So it's sort of like, where are you, what's next? On, but in a really major way, in a really major way, because this is huge. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's very, very like positive. It. And it's like, it's kind of cheeky, honestly. It's like, oh, all that stuff you've done, like all your albums and now your books and your foundation and all the cool stuff you've done. Okay, you've laid a foundation. Like, <laughs> like you yeah. could, you could, retire and no one would, would uh, people would be very very sad but nobody would blame you but no it's actually like kind of the beginning in this way so it's like what's next i like that i mean it's very timely because we are sort of we're we have this book coming out and then mm -hmm. a, a movie coming out a documentary um in october about this horrible catfishing thing that happened in our fan base but but we are looking at a stretch of time where we have no idea what comes next. We're not planning anything, plotting anything out. We're not sure what we're going to do next. And we're thinking a lot about what comes next in our life. Uh, so I like I that. I like and it, it too. We do, have a Somebody lust, we do have a lust for life and a lust for activities and yeah. things to do. So I yeah. like that. Yeah. And like, you know, this is a, this, in this, in this deck, this is a riff on the strength card, which you might know that image of like the woman with the lion. Right. You know, and so there's, you know, it's, in, in that reading of it, it's sort of like um, all your wild energy is like kind of being controlled. But here, all your wild energy is like, no, bring it on. I want to indulge it. I want to learn about it. I want to learn how to direct it. So it's not about repression. It's about like exulting in creativity and in life. Yeah. Cool. You're great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is like one of those funny readings where it's like, well, your life is just awesome. Them. Well, carry on. I, there's no, there's no, uh, one time I know that the tarot is different than going to see a psychic. Yes. But one time I'm not I, did a psychic. Go, I did go to see a psychic one time. And it's a really funny, it was a funny, it was kind of an odd experience, but I went in with my mom. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why we made the decision to do that, but I would definitely, if anyone watching is thinking about going to a psychic, don't bring your mom with you. But, um, but no, for no reason other than I just, having gone through the experience, I was like, this is something that I feel like I should have done alone. But um, it was really painful because this person has kind of come very highly recommended. I feel like I'm a very open book and I feel like my energy is really open, but this person couldn't get anything about really? me. Or my, yeah. They like could not, they didn't like, weren't able to even get close to what I do for a living. Didn't like, couldn't, didn't pick up on the fact that I was a twin, like had nothing to say about oh. me. That, but the best part was that at the end they were like I was I was like very heartbroken at the time it was like they're kind of searching for answers about mm -hmm. love and they fi when they finally got to that they were like your future person is right around the bend you know like this person is like going to really connect with you you know just kind of gave this huge so you know you know speech about how great this person was and then they're like he's amazing and my mom like at that point like it, it clearly hit her threshold for like this person having no idea what was going on it turned to me it was like you're straight and then we were like we're oh my god that's the worst i love stories about bad psychics like obviously i i'm i believe in psychic abilities i believe totally. people have that ability sure. um I don't, I don't know why 
if some people are just hucksters or if they're just having a bad work day, it's like hard to know. Yeah, and maybe I'm more closed than I think. I don't know. I have a no. whole, my whole brand is openness, yeah. but maybe, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm not. Come I don't on. know. <laughs> no, it, it makes no sense. That makes no sense that, 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 that they didn't know that you were a twin. It just seems like that's such powerful energy in your life, let alone your, your boy, your future boyfriend. They, they're talking about your future boyfriend now. I know. Really? But it was one thing though that was interesting was that I did sort of project that in my future that I was going to diversify my business. And I did. So they oh, that's did cool. Get, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who once went to see a psychic and they said, um, I'm seeing sad donkey face and taking all the hurt away. I'm taking all the hurt Damn. away. <laughs> they were doing that. Damn. I really think like when I was in eighth grade which is interesting because our book crush is set in eighth grade but when i was in eighth grade i got really obsessed with rune stones oh. Oh. my mom like this was like 1993 1994 my mom was kind of going through like we call it her wiccan stage like you know because she just like really found herself you know during <laughs> that time got like a really cool job she's a social worker working with a lot of like at a feminist organization with a lot of amazing women and like just like really found herself you know like it was yeah. sort of that first rebirth after having children and raising teenagers and whatever she really started to lean into herself instead of thinking only of her children and her, or her partner she sounds really, really cool yeah it was such an inspiring moment in our teenage adolescent lives to see my mom sort of refinding herself and stretching like her interests and whatever but anyway i'm sure the rune stones was like a, a byproduct of her getting into her like feminist hippie you know mid 90s like phase or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah i got really into rune stones it's the closest i've gotten to any sort of like um outside the the lines kind of whatever but i don't even like i would do readings this is all just coming back to me i totally forgot about all this but i would do readings for my friends and like memorized all the stones and what they meant and like yeah like had like a who, kn who i mean who knows if i had been better at it maybe i would have gone into that instead of music but <laughs> did you get have you ever like how did you get into tarot like how did you what was your i was like a teenager and i just was like a goth teenager in the 80s in new england and i just was attracted to to you know you go in these occult stores which are so alluring with your friends and there they are and you're like oh you know it's it's really cool if you think about it it's like 78 little pieces of art right yeah that you get to work with it's it's like it's really amazing and now yeah. we're in such a um we're in a renaissance of tarot like there's so many different decks when i first started reading there was like you know hardly any all the decks had this sort of very like medieval vibe medieval europe vibe you know and now there are so many cool decks and they're so they're so diverse and they look like real people in your life the characters and that's so cool. yeah and yet that's i'm really still cool. reading him with a medieval deck so <laughs> but i know this one so well i have other <laughs> ones too yeah that's really cool why and what inspired your new book like what what makes you sit down and write a book like this you know the um why did i do this i have been doing my podcast your magic yeah it's really fun to have like a very specific project that was just around witchcraft and that practice and so i was really really into it and then it cost so much money to do a podcast so we you know our funding kind of went away we tried to keep it going but couldn't um, we have all of our, you know, episodes on online and stuff, but I just, I wanted a way to keep focusing on it and thinking about these stories and thinking about making up spells and stuff. So my, cool. my agent was like, what are we going to do next? And I'm like, oh, I kind of feel like staying on this witch trip for a little bit. Maybe we can do a witch book. Witch, witch trip. I love but it. A witch That's trip. A witch trip. <laughs> yeah. The t-shirt just to be made. <laughs> or I'm on a witch trip. Oh, I see. The, the brand marketing ideas are just blowing up in my head. Oh my right God. What about you guys? How, like what, um, I mean, high school is so good. Were you just sort of like, that was fun. That was a cool experience. What, what are we going to write next? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think for Sarah and I, the last handful of years, it's just been exciting to not tour quite as much and get to make other things, you know, starting with high yeah. school, our memoir, and then, you know, developing it for TV. It was really neat to learn about a different industry and then when they approached us about doing when our publisher approached us about doing the graphic novels it was a very similar feeling like it was an art form that we love we're both massive novel readers and appreciators and i think we just thought it would be really neat to 
explore that world and an opportunity yeah. to work with Walden, obviously you don't say no to. Yeah. Um, now we just like love that age group that we're writing for. We're actually writing another book right now that's sort of aimed at that sort of 10 to 12 year old range. We kind of want to be like gay Judy Bloom, maybe a little, I guess. Maybe, maybe that's our aspirational um, hopes. There's but no uh, better. That would be so great. Like, <laughs> you're so trustworthy. Or like, yes, we want to know your your experience, your take. Oh my god. Yeah. Did you? I don't know. I think that's the journey right now. Is just like we. I love being a musician. I love making music. But you know, we've we've definitely hit a point in our career where in our lives where just being on the road all the time is just not. You know, Sarah had a kid two years ago and wants to be at home being a parent. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we have to. 10 records out already like we could tour forever on those 10 records like we probably don't even need to ever write more music i want to i'm dying to but um yeah so i think it's just like been more about a creative journey for us i think so much of our career has been motivated by climbing and you know building and getting bigger and exposure and and it lost some of the heart and not I actually I don't I retract that it hasn't lost heart and soul but it's so much about what you do is like you make an album and then go tour yeah. it and promote it and it feels really heavy and big and exhausting and long and I think with some of these other creative projects it just feels like it's about the art mm -hmm. like the book I don't know why I mean that's so sad to say because I love music so much but because music is no longer a physical thing like it's not a cd or a piece of vinyl you collect it feels less tangible to it doesn't feel as much like you can hold on to it or something. And, and that's cool too. It becomes the, the audiences, it becomes the listeners, you know, it lives right. in the, but with a book, it's like a, the idea that like, you know, preteens are stumbling into a bookstore and finding something, some queer story that we wrote. You, you understand this. You just, it makes you want to make real things. I want to make real things. Even if like way less people <laughs> interact with it. That's so, physical so great. Yeah. Are you guys gonna do a, not to put you on the road again because I understand it's like exhausting but are you guys gonna do a book tour yeah we have a book tour starting uh well it's September 23rd we our first date is October 1st in Seattle so we're doing I think six or seven stops um which people can find those dates on our website we're just uh doing a few dates on the east coast and west coast and then cool. we've got some movie premieres for this this docu scary documentary we also just were a part of making but uh but yeah we're not doing that many dates um because we are wrapping up we just finished two years of touring so are you gonna go out in support of I'm, your book like do you go a little bit not i mean i'm so, doing a couple things in los angeles right. and then i'm right. gonna i'm gonna do lit quake in san francisco which is like a very fun party in san you know literary That's festival. It's lit quake lit quake yeah in san francisco it's really fun it's like it's actually my favorite literary festival so i'm happy to go back there That's so yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, we haven't gotten a lot of, we're still learning the literary um, festival world, but I hope one day, I feel like that's half the reason why I want to write books is just to hang out with people who write books. It's so fun. <laughs> I know, I know. I feel the exact same way. I feel, are you guys going to come to um, to Los Angeles? Yeah, we're, so we're doing, doing Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles in October. We're also doing New York. We're doing the Brooklyn Library and Comic-Con in New York, and then we're doing Chicago and Calgary. And two dates in Toronto. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But does yeah. it feel, even though th that's a lot, but does it feel like it's it's still like not not nearly as big of a deal as, or as exhausting as touring music, for your music? It's a good question. I, well, I guess that's a good question for after we finish yeah. this three week crisscrossing the country three times. It's definitely a bit scattered and all over the place and I'm sure it'll feel like a lot. I love, to talk to people though so i love book tours when we did our last book tour we did one for junior high which was the first book in our graphic novel series last year and we enjoyed it so much um sarah and i i mean we love playing music but man just give us a mic we just love to fuck ah, blah 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 you know What's like your, that sort of you know what your what your mercury is in uh, just to make everything oh i'm sure astrological i'm sure i dated someone who told me at one point but i cannot recall <laughs> okay <laughs> Fair enough. Fair um, enough. You ruled by Mercury anyway, so you right. know that's the ch the chatty the chatty planet. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We're very very chatty. So yeah, I love I love the book tour stuff. I, I honestly I just feel so grateful that we get to go out and talk about like the things we make. I don't, I don't know why I find it so enjoyable. And we got like we have amazing moderators who are doing all the events. And my mom is moderating two of the events. She's doing. Uh, our home city of Vancouver and Calgary. She's doing both those events. So that should be really fun. Oh. 
God, I'm obsessed with your mom. That's amazing. Wow. A lot. Wow. That's very yeah, cool. she's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we, should we like answer, help somebody with a problem? Yeah, I love that. I heard a rumor that we might get to help someone with a problem. Let's do it. Yes, let's do it. Okay, let me see. Let me see. What is this? Um, where is, oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, I've been going through some big internal shifts lately and trying to find a steady path forward. My health has been a roller coaster over the last couple of years and I'm finding a path back to thriving. Oh, finding the path back to thriving is eluding me. How can I safely find that spark to reignite this engine within and get my knee train going again? Oh, huh. This person's in a funk and having yeah. body problems will get you in a funk. Yeah, for sure. Have you, have you ever, what do you do when you feel like you're in a funk? I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. Oh, um, uh. It's interesting actually that I resonate with the question because I have, have been having lots of, uh, I have an autoimmune, like a histamine, uh, overactive histamine reaction. So I get, I like take a lot of antihistamines every day and I have like chronic swelling and inflammation and hives. And I a hundred percent know it's emotional, totally stress related. And yeah, I kind of hit a funk around it if, like maybe six months ago. Like I felt really, really emotional and bummed out about it because it's really triggered by heat and oh. um, stress. And <laughs> so it's like going out on tour in the summer. Oh, God, it's, no. It's like hard. But I, I, it was really cool because I sort of publicly had sort of talked a little bit about it. And I said something like, I also am aware that like it's not really that serious of a problem and I need to just like get over it or something. And a really amazing friend of mine who works with a lot of medical professionals, she texts me and she said, our body doesn't know the difference between what we're going through and what other people are going through. Like your body just knows what it's going through. And so like, don't write yourself off like that. Like make sure that you give yourself time to deal with how stressful and how hard this is and like let yourself feel that. And that was super helpful for me. I think I need permission to feel bad sometimes and yeah. don't let my, so I would also say like my non-tarot related advice for anyone who's in a funk and just feeling like shit is also like, it's okay to like feel that yeah. and just, you know, let it run its course. You know, there will, there will absolutely be an end to that feeling, but it's what you're feeling and honoring that I think is super important. I so agree with that. It's like, it's, it, I don't know. There's something about like our culture of like compulsive happiness and productivity. It's like, we're always supposed to be like on and like winning and yeah. that's not normal it's oh. not normal not human or healthy or anything yeah. um so I, I picked three cards for this person and it's so funny that the center card i was talking about these centerpiece cards is this guy is in kind of a funk he is <laughs> he doesn't know how to get the meat you'd think he's on his me bird but he's not like this bird is actually magical it can go up really high it can go underwater and he just doesn't know where he wants it to go. So it's just sort of, uh. and it's making me wonder if this person feels like, um, you know, going through big internal shifts, you might need to get to know yourself all over again. Like mm. you might, like the things that, you know, are, is this person trying to get back on the track that they used to be on? Then maybe that track is gone. Like maybe there's like a new you who wants new things and it's part of figuring out like, there's a whole new me train. Um, mm -hmm. The two cards that are super supportive, this one is the Six of Swords. It's called Science. It's Mercury and Aquarius. Aquarius is really visionary. And so a card like this wants you to think big and think weird and think out of the box. And so it's sort of like, well, who are you now? What, what, do you, what are the kind of things you want to do? You know, like if you need to reignite your engine, like are you trying to do that with things that maybe don't excite you anymore? And also you got the emperor, which is very like, this is a strong ass card. It's like Aries. It's like, you are the king of your life. You know, it's not gendered. It's just more like very, um, it's very like extroverted energy. And so it's like, do it, you know, do the things. Um, if you are in good health or better health, you know, you made a point of saying like, you know, you want it to find uh, like a safely, you want to safely find that spark. So considering what you're what you're able to safely do right now just do it just do it just take some chances like do some different things and see if you can jolt yourself out of this kind of wishy-washy and figure out who the new who the new you is that's what i would that's what the tarot's saying 
sometimes what I say and what the tarot says is very different, which is hard because <laughs> <laughs> I'm very opinionated. I'll be like, no, you clearly need to get out of that relationship. And then the tarot is like, nope. I'm like, oh, okay. Guess that, guess there's something for you to learn there. <laughs> well, that's, a, I think that's cool though. Like yeah. different perspective. Although someone did recently teach me the term like polling. Like when you go out and you talk to many different people yeah. to get their on something you're pulling and that could be like super confusing so maybe it's kind of nice to think something could just be definitive you know like rely on one source yeah. i don't know i think that could do you tend to pull are you a polar i am not a polar <laughs> i uh, no <laughs> uh no but i do like like i it's interesting it was just like w was thinking about our book tour coming up we're starting to figure out the sort of flow of show and a lot of the stories that we write about in Crush are like the graphic novel. It, it's we've modernized and you know fictionalized a lot of what happened to us mm -hmm. as teenagers, but we've embedded a lot of stories from the beginning of our career in. But we we've, we've played a different route. Like so, for example, what started our career was we won a contest, a, a battle of the bands when we were teenagers yeah. against college age students. So in the book, we make ourselves lose the story, like lose the contest because like how like what if we'd lost the contest maybe we wouldn't even be Tegan and Sarah like maybe we would have never started our band officially like if we'd lost maybe that would have been such an intense blow we wouldn't have taken it seriously and thought we could make it a career and I do love doing that so it's not so much polling as I love to consider like if this is the thing that everything in my body is telling me to do but what if I did the exact opposite of it right you know like I do think something about that that that's really interesting. Yeah. Someone's like, that's the bad timeline. I know it makes me think of, we got to get the multiverse away from Marvel. We need to like reclaim the multiverse because I really love it. <laughs> and I'm just like, now it just makes me think of Marvel, which is a bummer. But yeah, mm -hmm. there, it's so wild to think of all the different things that had to happen to put you right where you are yeah. in that universe card. Yeah. That's cool that you, that you did. So, so do, is Sarah like that too? Do you guys think similarly about life or like is it is it easy it must be pretty rewarding to collaborate obviously but is it, is it does it feel different with um with writing a book than it has with music oh that's a good question yeah i think with music it's more of a solitary thing and with at least the books we've written together mm -hmm. like it's collaboration i mean we collaborate in music but later on in the process okay. but with the we you know i mean with our memoir we wrote our own sides of the books mm -hmm. and then wove together the story, weaved, weaved together, whatever. Um, with Junior High and Crush, the graphic novel, I didn't know the graphic novels were written in script form. So when we first started writing the book, it's, we were like, ooh, how do we do this? So Sarah started the book and she would just send me a few chapters and I would sort of write the story from there. We didn't have any sort of structure or kind. It was sort of choose your own adventure. So we kind of took young T and Sarah on these twists and turns without approval from each other and it was really fun and collaborative i think it is really cool to have a collaborator for sure mm -hmm. but when it, but also we're sisters so sometimes it just feels like we want to murder one another <laughs> because there's like a politeness when you're there's like a there's natural boundaries and politeness when you're collaborating with someone who's not related to you right um, yeah but 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 i do like it it's a good challenge i think it it writing a couple of books together did make us more collaborative space for sure like there was more i felt like i could go to sarah and say i don't know how to finish the song or i don't know you know lyrically i'm not trying to push myself here and and i was more open to her suggestions because of it mm -hmm. do you feel lonely that you don't have a time it is weird to not to feel like you're in a vacuum and like because i feel sometimes when i'm writing i feel really deranged i'll be like i'll just go down these wormholes or off on these tangents and i'm like is does this make sense is this interesting you know so it i could see how it would have it'd be really wonderful to have somebody right there being like um can you get back over or like whoa that's yeah. cool you know but yeah i think the the solitariness of it it's not quite it's not so much a loneliness but it's it's almost more like it makes me feel really mentally ill like i've been in my been talking to myself you know for for too long sure. and often about like intense things so but um sure. But I have a lot of writer friends, so I can just be like, I feel I've been writing for three hours and I feel crazy. And like anyone would know what I'm talking about, I think. Yeah. So that's that's really helpful. 
which I'm um, speaking of friends. Okay, here, let's do this. I think they're going to kick us off fairly soon. But I have, okay. have a little question here from someone. I moved to Massachusetts over a year ago, and I've been finding it hard to build slash find a community. Any insight? I'm going to shuffle and see like what kind of uh, suggestions or insight the tarot. My bad joke was leave Massachusetts, but I'm from Massachusetts. So I, I get to <laughs> I get to make fun of it. I have a love hate with it. Yeah. Um, oh. Community and make friends when you get older. Like, you know, you don't have any of the natural social structure of school or, you know, my partner, you know, has now worked remotely for five years and we moved up to Vancouver right before COVID and she was just like how the fuck do you make friends when you work remotely and you're living in a new country in a new city and I was like I don't know wow. I just hang out with her. I'm always trapped with Sarah so <laughs> um did she end up making and making new friends <laughs> doing okay yeah. doing okay well how did she do it <laughs> oh well well, yeah, that's a good one. Well, one of the things was leaning into her special interests. Okay. She has a lot of them. That's cool. You know, yeah. Train runner. She's yeah. So leaning into, in, leaning into her special interests. That's community. really cool. I feel like people are nice, unless they're not. But I think that like when you do that and you're like, I'm new to town and I'm the newest person in your whatever your group is. You know, people want to welcome you this person got really great cards but it's really funny so they got they got the empress card which is really beautiful which is like this is a card about community that's to me saying community is there for you to plug into um you got the lust card which is also again about putting yourself out there like yes yeah, special interest what are you passionate about um but then in the middle it's like princess of swords and she's like wild so the story of her is that she's gone into the temple and like the temple's corrupt, so she's just destroying it. She's not like, hey, let's try to reform the temple. She's like, no, fuck this. And she's just <laughs> destroying it. And there's just debris flying everywhere. And so I feel like it's calling this person to like, you've got to really, any, any part of you that's been a little bit passive in the face of it, you need to just destroy that, you know, that inclination and really put yourself out there and go and make friends with people and like, be a be like a passionate part of this community. Like, be the cringy person that says hello. Like, smile <laughs> at people. Um, yeah, be oh. be that. Be just like really go to the places that you want to be, where there's fun things happening, and like connect with those other people. I know easier said than done, but whatever it is that you're doing right now, you got to go in a different direction. I think. Yeah, that's what I would say. Well, it's 6.05. Are you on the East Coast or the West Coast? I'm on the West Coast. Yeah, just getting ready to head out on tour. So, But this was delightful. It was so nice to get to chat. Are you in L.A.? Normally, oh. yes. I'm in New York right now for some work. But, I, yeah, I'm in, I'm in L.A. normally. I'll try and catch you guys when you come through. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hit us up either New York or LA if you want to come to a book event or something. Ooh, I really do. That'd be so fun. I'm really excited about it. And thank you so much. I feel honored that I got to be your first tarot reader. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for reading. And, and uh, thank you for inviting me out here and talk about the book. And I'm so excited to read your book. Thank you for sending a copy of it. And I hope everybody checks you out on uh, your book dates as well. Oh, thank and, you. Yeah. And, cool. And thanks, everybody. I tuned in. Thank you, everybody. For all your everybody being here with all your hearts and your sweetness <laughs> okay cool i'll be back right, next we'll week if i didn't get to your questions i'll get to them next week and um till then all right okay bye bye, -bye.